If anyone's wondering where Matt is, I fired his ass. He he's gone away. Um, he's actually he's in jail. Who who is this? M MTN Vodafone Airtel scam scam scammy scam. Happened in the nineties. Uh... Well, I don't know. This might be the last time I'm on TikTok, depending on how this goes, because going to be some profanity here and there. This is a kind of a bastardized version of our show happened in the nineties. Uh, my buddy, Matt, he's not with us today. So, uh, we're going to try something new for the first time. Going to ride this out solo dolo by the seat of my pants. And, uh, yeah, if anyone's wondering where Matt is, I fired his ass. That's right. Fired him. No, I didn't fire him. I did not fire my friend. He he's gone away. Um, he's actually he's in jail. Yeah, he's doing some time. Yeah, he uh, broke into some houses. I think he was tied to the mafia. Something of that nature. No, he's not in jail. Not for that. But. All I know is he's not here. I miss him. Our Sunday talks. This is when we usually record for our show. And uh, if you didn't know, happened in the 90s. It is a podcast. It is a show. Um, we, we release our episodes every Thursday on YouTube and all streaming platforms. And you should subscribe. You, should, you, you guys should subscribe. If you're not already if you're not subscribed you totally should you should watch our videos we talk about the greatest decade ever all things 90s whether it's sports music tv shows whether they're stupid or not movies whether they're stupid or not that's what we talk about on the happen in the 90s and i see people coming in on tiktok and no one has gotten back to me can you say profane words on tiktok <laughs> somebody let me know but uh yeah it's just me i'm steve g and i'll be talking about 90s related things who who is this M mtn vodafone air to scam scam scammy scam mcscammerton here uh unlimited internet bundle for sale and a bunch of numbers afterwards who like who are you is this even a real person who sent you? Uh, I, I'm talking to TikTok over here, and I'm talking to StreamYard. TikTok, do better, all right? Why Why you got to be so difficult? And, and apparently, apparently, TikTok does not work with Max. They're, they're not Steve Jobs friendly. They're, they're not, like, Mac user friendly. They're, they're, they're in a PC world. They're part of that PC universe. Get this out of here. Who, who is this? Uh, Alaman, Alamalia Dunga? That's a made-up name. I don't care. You're not a real person. It, but what are you trying to do? Trying to do some unlimited internet bundle? That doesn't even exist. All right. I told you guys, this is going to be a bastardized version of the show. Uh, Matt, like I said, he, he's in jail, I think. But not for like anything bad. I think he got caught stealing basketball cards. But free Matt. Free Matt. I miss my bro. And uh, I don't know. If you're not familiar with the premise of our show, we talk about things that happen on the day of whatever the date of Thursday is. So let's say this upcoming Thursday is going to be June 20th. So typically me and Matt, we record on Sunday, the, the Sunday prior, and we do our preparation and everything. And then come Thursday, it's there for the masses presented on YouTube and all streaming platforms. And again, TikTokers, and Instagrammers and Facebookers, people who are liking the videos that we share or that I share. Y'all need to subscribe, subscribe, like, 
comment. Get comfortable. Make yourself at home. No one's still gotten back to me about TikTok. Can you cuss somebody a head nod, like it or something? Can you use profanity? Can you say the P word? Or do you have to resort to vagina? Can you say vagina? I know you, you guys are so difficult. Why TikTok? Why? Thanks a lot, Obama. That's who we blame. And another thing, keep politics off of the happened in the 90s page. Keep the politics to yourself. We don't care about your shitty MSNBC, Fox News, CNN ideologies. We don't care. We're here to share fun content, entertaining content, things from a great decade, a wholesome decade, a decade of TGIF. Uh, of Michael Jordan and Ken Griffey and Steve Urkel, Uncle Jesse, all of those good things. Back before Will Smith was like canceled, semi canceled, he's not really canceled, but you get what I'm saying. Back when he was just the Fresh Prince. God damn it. I cussed. Am I still here? All right. I don't know. This might be my last TikTok. This this might be the last day of having a TikTok account. And I feel like these numbers are misleading. I see one person in, but I see like a bunch of people hopped in. And no one's saying anything. So I don't even know why I had to go through those extra measures just to entertain the TikTok crowd. They're, they're over here, and, and the mic and everything is over here where I'm addressing the Facebook crowd, the Instagram crowd. We don't even touch. I don't touch the X. I don't touch the Twitter because it's just, I, leave, uh, I don't understand that world. I barely understand the TikTok world. Thanks a lot, TikTok. So anyways, oh, oh. We get sidetracked a lot, if you can't tell. Uh, just imagine if Matt was here, we, we'd be going around the corner just to go next door. A lot. So, despite all of that, we somehow managed to formulate a cohesive show, if you could call it that, a coherent show. I'm live. And usually I have my partner here with me going live. We hardly go live. So going live and, and live solo, it's like I'm, I'm like Pac, man. All eyes are really on just me. I didn't intend it that way, but Matt had to go to jail. I don't know. Free Matt. Put some money on his books. I, I, I give the con the contact information after this recording. We got to save that man. Hi, people who are coming and going. I see a Melva. I see a Sean. She liked the live. Melva liked the live. Be more people be like Melva. And, and I hope I pronounced it right. Melva. Be like her. It's a her. Yeah. Be be like Melva. Let's just say, yeah. For for, for the sake of staying PC in, the, in this day and age, let's just address Melva. Thank you. Be like her and like this stuff. Came here for the WWE video. How much of a fan are you? Oh, Melva. Ho, 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 ho. You have no idea. Ho, 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 ho. You have no idea, Melva. How much of a fan am I? Man, let me tell you what. When I find out that someone else is a, a fan of the wrestling, you're never going to lose me. We are instant BFFs. And Melva, I already, I already knew from the vibes you came in here liking shit. I, I like that. When people come in and they, they like shit. This is your safe space to just 
unload all of the wrestling knowledge and you know my our sweet spot well i think more so well me and matt our sweet spot is the 90s and 80s that's the era we grew up in you know hawk hogan who's still my goat i don't care what people say he's still my goat and that's the person who brought me into this that's the that's that's the icon that, that is my hero like growing up hulk hogan and michael jordan were my heroes and i always tell people like i never i never got into comic books i was always collecting wwf magazine and back in my day in, in like the 80s and 90s wwf magazine was pretty inexpensive if i'm not mistaken they were like no more than five dollars so it would be nothing for my grandma to like just throw me three dollars four dollars or you know to spend every month because they came out monthly and you know with the demise of press everything just being readily available on the internet i don't even know if wwe still does that if they even still like who cares about magazines if, if playboy is just going to in theirs why like who cares about the they don't want to pay for titties on the page why 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 care about these like so i don't know maybe they still are but anyways once again melba i don't know if you heard but i we get sidetracked a lot thank you for the rose uh and you're my bff you do realize that right like we're homies so yeah and uh Hogan, that was the guy that brought me into this, and I, I took some time off. I think uh, early '90s, probably when stuff started getting really corny. Uh, you know, when they were bringing in wrestling garbage men, and you know, I actually liked the original Doink. He was cool, but it was just getting goofy. Then they had the wrestling dentist Isaac Yankum would eventually become Kane and I don't care about the dentist or Kane never liked Kane don't talk to me about no damn Kane I don't f with Kane I think Kane is just really corny and as we're all finding or as I'm finding out the person Glenn Jacobs is pretty corny too I don't know he just seems like a like a pud might be a nice guy but <laughs> I don't know. I just always thought he was kind of a douche, but uh, that's just me. Uh, what do I know? I'm just the guy with the podcast. But uh, yes, to bring up your point about Attitude Era, you mentioned the Attitude Era, and that's when I came back. After they were done with the wrestling dentist and the, the uh, tax man and the garbage truck drivers, then Stone Cold comes in, and I was like, who is this guy? This guy is really cool. He gives no Fs and he's just kicking everyone's ass and people hate him he's got a lot of haters and he don't care about that and his name is steve i always appreciate that i always tell me i never met a steve i didn't like thank god i never met steven seagal yeah then now forever together yeah this mm. wait so what, Melva, what do you know about wrestling? Where, where did, does your knowledge start? And who brought you into this? Because for me, it was my grandmother. But for a lot of black people, like their grandparents, and typically the grandmother is, is the one who like kickstarted it all, like, ignited that initial interest so as i'm watching it it's like man this hogan dude he's taking over the world this is my guy he's always been my guy even when into the hollywood days and that was another thing that brought me into the wrestling hogan went rogue and that shook the world man like i never no one ever thought that was going to happen and then when it happened it was like they're booing him but there were a huge number of people who weren't booing him they were applauding that they were celebrating these activities because it's cool to do bad things right 
it was fun to do bad things sometimes. Well, I own a few WWE encyclopedias and I just saw it one day and fell in love. So I'm familiar with just about everyone. Awesome. Awesome. I like that. Do your research. And, and that's what I did. I always did my research on things that even happened before me. Like when it comes to like NBA or even just things that really interested me, you know, sitcoms. Oh, Nick at night. That, that enlightened me to a lot of like old stuff from back in the day, the black and white days. And then, you know, with NBA, I would always get books in the library about like all these records and stuff like that. And then with wrestling, it was the same deal. Like I would hear these names, like who was Bruno San Martino? And then we get old tapes from the library. Shout out to Sandusky Library. Yes, my grandmother, she used to work there really her whole adult life. And uh, yeah, man, you, you do your research on the things that you're really interested in, you know, and, and with the Internet now, you know, I think it, it makes things easier. Internet gets such a bad rap. I have a shirt that says warning. I will talk about wrestling until someone stops me. Yes, Melva, this is your safe. This is your safe place. This is your safe haven. And that's how I am. That's how I am. And it, I don't really keep up with the current product. It's pretty difficult. It's pretty difficult because I, I don't like Roman Reigns. I, I never. Uh, it just. Eh, eh, eh. That's a whole nother thing. I do like Cody. I like what they're doing. So I try to chime in every now and then to see what the goings on is, brother. I try to. But yeah, when you're talking about 80s, like what they consider the golden era when Vince first took over. And then like e even in the little the cartoonish era, I was I was checking in every now and then, you know, I, I remember my grandmother bought the, the pay-per-view where Lawrence Taylor fought Bam Bam Bigelow in WrestleMania. I think it was WrestleMania 11. So, you know, I, I kept tabs on the goings on. Bro, I have so many DVDs, books, action figures and all. OMG, I was so happy when we when he beat Rope. Same here. Same here. He did it for the American dream. For Do it for daddy, baby. Do it for the American dream. He's watching over you. Yes. And I I used to have action figures, but uh, along the way, little cousins happen and, and little siblings happen. I have a little brother and I have some younger siblings. And, then, you know, as I got older, I kept my toys intact. But Melva, I'm telling you, like, it's just it was a different generation. I'm I'm an early 80s baby, but my brother and my younger siblings, they're one is 89, and the other they're 90s babies. It's a different breed, different breed. It's just about destruction and chaos. Break stuff. Let me see what this armor do. No, that arm isn't supposed to do that. Hogan is just supposed to do this. He's just that's all he can do is slam. No, there's no need to try to find out if he's if he could clothesline. No, if you want a clothesline, you get the Hacksaw Jim Duggan because that's what he can do. Hogan's a slammer. But they didn't grasp that. I like The Rock, but not this final boss role. I actually like the final boss role. I have a son, so I know how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm 81. Well, oh, well, you, you should be on the show with me, Melva. You probably know a lot more than I do when it comes to this great American pastime we call wrestling. And since we're on the topic, you need to check out our last episode that we just dropped for June 13th, June 13th in the 90s. Um, happened in the 90s. If you look it up on YouTube, you'll find us. And I discussed the first wrestling event I went to June 13th, 1993, King of the Ring. And it was in Dayton, Ohio at the Nutter Center. It's, it's I'm sure the best thing to ever hit that city. But they, they picked Dayton of all places. And I got to see the immortal one against Yokozuna, my, my hero. 
Yeah. And he lost. That sucked. He lost. Love it so much. Where can I see it? Drop your channel in the chat. Um, I, I'm not too keen on the, the TikTok technology, but uh, our link is actually in our bio, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I thought I'd never be the person to say, <laughs> links in the bio, but here I am being an influencer. Your first time was in 2015 in Detroit. Okay, that's when you got your cherry pop. And also, if you check out our YouTube, we talk about wrestling a lot. This has been a page. Our page has been open since 2021. We started happening in the 90s, January 2021. And, you know, we're pretty consistent for the most part. We drop just about every Thursday. Sometimes we, we take a break off. But, uh, you know, just like Vince, I, I, I'm all seasons. Winter spring summer fall damn near i almost forgot four seasons it's it's only four of them but uh yeah we, along the way from 2021 up until now we talked about a lot of pay-per-views that hit that timeline man excited wasn't a word i go back and watch the show i was on youtube yeah yeah i hope you enjoy it and back to this guy Alamalia Dunga. See, I don't like this, and this needs to be stopped. I'm just going to put this back up just to put it on blast because I, I have a settings in my phone that stops these scammers. Since you want to be bold enough, Alamalia Dunga, to you, you want to put a halt in the production of, of Happened in the 90s, here's your shine. Here's your shine, Alamalia Dunga, if that's really you, if you're a real person. I translate all of this shit that he has up here as scam, scam, scammington. Scammy McScam, scam. JR, I, I hope he recovers. For, for those not on the TikTok, and can't see Melva's uh, question. She says, what you think about JR? Hopefully he recovers well. I, I do too, because I think he's the greatest. Um, he's the only wrestling personality I've actually met. I met him back in 2017. He was doing a book signing tour and he came to Houston back when I was still in Texas. And I've never met a wrestler, um, but I met him and that's still great. That's still great. And I could tell he was getting tired because it was a long day. I was at the end of the line. And, uh, you know, I, I just had one question. I didn't want to just like polling him for a bunch of stuff, like all of his knowledge, because we'd sit there for all of the days. But uh, I just wanted to ask him, like, what is the favorite? What is your favorite match? And in a very JR way, he's like, ask someone what their favorite match is, is like asking them what kind of burger they like. Sometimes you want a Carl Jr. Sometimes you want a Whataburger. I, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, but he just explained it in a very JR way. And he just rattles off a bunch of different ones. Uh, one that stood out was uh, the Steamboat Flare match, and they've had several, but he he just he mentioned a specific one i can't remember man i was just in awe you know as a wrestling stand i'm sitting next to the man you know you got you get to take a picture by his book you know he'll sign it and you take a picture with good old jr man but yeah man godspeed to that to that guy he's a legend i've never had the pleasure of meeting anyone like Outside of that, I, I haven't met an actual wrestler. I would love to one day. I, I would move. Oh, I was going to say move. I will fly. I will make a trip to Florida just to see the Hulkster. And that says a lot because I detest that state. I hope you don't live in Florida. And I know you mentioned Detroit. Maybe, maybe you're up in Michigan. You've had interactions with R-Truth, Natalia Ryback, and Ariana Andrew. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And uh, 
you know, once again, the premise of our show, we talk about things that happen on the date of the following Thursday. So for this upcoming Thursday, it's going to be June 20th. And, uh, you know, June 20th, that's going to be West Virginia Day. I don't know what all entails. Let, let's see what, what happens on West Virginia Day. West Virginia Day is a state holiday in the U.S. state of West Virginia, celebrated annually on June 20th. The date celebrates the state's 1863 admission to the Union as a result of the secession of several northwestern counties of Virginia during the American Civil War. So it is mostly celebrated through festivals in major West Virginia cities. I like turtles. It's, it's got some cowardice to the backstory. They're, they're a part of that group that left. They, they left America. They don't want to be part of America. Then they got the ass beat. So they're celebrating when they got admitted to the union. They didn't want to be, I guess they didn't want to be a part of it. I don't know. So like we're West Virginia. So June 20th, that, that's going to be West, West Virginia day. And uh, no, no one has still chimed in to let me know if you can use profanity on here. Melva, you're, you're the only active one. Can, can you curse with words? You, you say you can't? You can't do the swearing on here? Because I would hate to drop the TikTok. I wouldn't. People are petty. Very true. Big facts. So since this is my first time I want people to be gentle with me. Don't hurt me. I'm, I'm going to try to be as PC as possible on this good Sunday. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, all of you mother effers, the people who did that. You had options, but you chose to keep that baby. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. I think I've done a pretty good job of avoiding the swearing. For the most part, I might have dropped a, a S. I I only dropped the F. That that's atomic level. That's atomic level. So with that in mind, no, I'm not a father. I'm not a father. Um, I I, I can't have children. Um, but like nothing like surgical, nothing like medical or anything. I'm just too ugly. But yeah, speaking of fathers, though, I, I want to give a shout out to Matt's dad, uh, George Leroy. We, we talk about him from time to time. And uh, he's a good dude. Great human being, man. He's a legend, too. Shout out to George. And one of the cool stories about Matt and his dad, me and me and Matt, we were roommates um, our freshman year, at Bowling Green. And. George, his his dad, he came to uh, bring in a futon and he wanted to help us put together like planks uh, so that we can have uh, like bunk beds. I don't know what kind, what do you call them when the, when the beds are higher? Like he helped, like we, all three of us, we put together these planks so that we can like have like more room, more space in these small dorms. And I look back at that time, like, man, this is cool, man. Like I, I got to share this like father son bonding experience with my buddy and his dad. And, uh, you know, at the time I wasn't like speaking to my dad. Um, but I thought about that and it's like, man, like I, I would love to have that with my father and lo and behold, years later, man, uh, me and my father did start speaking again and we did have those moments, man, you know, just have nothing beats having like a, a cold one, you know, having a drink, watching some sports, you know, in this instance, me and my dad, we were watching the NBA finals go Cavs uh, in 2015 and they would lo lose to those Golden State Warriors. But that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. <sighs> but yeah, man. Uh, happy Father's Day to my dad, to my grandpa, to my uncles, uh, and my my friends' fathers, and uncles and grandfathers. This is y'all's day. 
And also uh, on June 20th, it's, it's West Virginia Day, but in 1992, a private matter debuts on HBO. The story of Sherry Finkbein, a woman who sought a medically recommended abortion and endured a firestorm of public controversy about her decision. And it's directed by William Nicholson, starring Sissy Spacek, Aidan Quinn, William H. Macy, and Estelle Parsons. And I watched this, I think I saw it on, was it, I think it's on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. They have it on YouTube. And I didn't know that the lady who had the abortion, she was the original host of Romper Room. Melva, do you remember Romper Room? Because I do. They they had, like, I think two different hosts. But the lady in a private matter, she was she was before my time. And like that show went on forever. I think it started like in the 50s. Let's see, Romper Room. It started 1953. Its last episode was in 94. February 10th, 1953 to December 20th, 1994. And yeah, the original host, Sherry Finkbein, she, yeah, she had an abortion. And at the time, since this was like the 50s, you know, people were up in arms about women having abortions. Really, they were up in arms about women getting divorced. They would put that scarlet letter on you and, and you would be shamed in the community forget just for having a divorce let alone an abortion oh an abortion but sherry finkbein you could say she's a pioneer of sorts because she did this in the 50s and, and fast forward to 2024 and look, look at the difficulties they're just handing out women now like oh no we're pro-life we're pro-life and i don't want to get into politics but Shout out to Sherry Finkbein, A Private Matter, yes. June 20th, 1992. The film, it, it had two Oscar winners, Sissy Spacek and Estelle Parsons, and an Oscar nominee, William H. Macy. And William H. Macy, I remember him as Little Bill. I always, that's my first go-to, Little Bill. From Boogie Nights, classic. But uh, somebody else, who didn't see this in 92 outside of Steve G and probably Matt G is probably Sting, Ric Flair, and the rest of them boys in WCW. Cause in 1992, Beach Blast 92 is airing on pay-per-view at the Mobile Civic Center in Mobile, Alabama. And I, I started to watch this and then I stopped because it's just like, oh man, I just don't have the time and it just, uh, eh, eh. <laughs> I just had to make one of those kind of calls. Uh, yeah, let's, let's not. But Scotty Flamingo, that was the first match. Scotty Flamingo and flying Brian Pillman. That match was like 17 minutes and 30 seconds. 17 minutes and 30 seconds. It was actually, it was a decent match, but there were two other matches on there and they were super long as well, man. Like you started off with a match that was like almost 20 minutes, but then there was an Iron Man match with Ricky Steamboat and Rick Rude. That was a good match. That was a good match because it's Rick Rude and Ricky Steamboat. But that was followed up with a, like a 15 and a half minute match with Barry Windham and Dustin Rhodes and Nikita Koloff versus Arn Anderson, Bobby Eaton and Steve Austin. So that's, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot to pack in. And then that was followed up by another tag team match that went the whole 30 minute draw. So you had two 30 minute matches in beach blast 92, two 30 minute matches. In the, the main event, that was Rick Steiner and Scott Steiner, the Steiner brothers versus Steve Williams and Terry Gordy. And at the time, the Steiner brothers, they were the tag team champions. So since it just went to a draw, they just kept the straps. 
And, and I, I feel like that's not a payoff for the main event of a pay-per-view. That's not a proper payoff. You don't, you don't just like, oh yeah, we ran out of time. Eh, where's the climax? Where's the, there's no, I feel like there's no resolution. It's just like, it continues. Like y'all got to get that back. Y'all got to get that fade back. Run that fade back. Is that, is that what the kids say? Got to run that fade. 30 minute. No, 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 no. We want those belts. We didn't get pinned. We didn't submit. I try to watch stuff other than WWE, but it's hard. You know what, Melvin? You should try to get into ECW. If, if you love the Attitude Era of WWF, you should watch some ECW from the 90s because that revolutionized the game of professional wrestling. It's like the whole what came first, the, the, the chicken or the egg. People talk about, well, if it wasn't for NWO, there wouldn't be a Stone Cold or a DX or an Attitude Era in general. And there, there's some truth to that, but I feel like none of that would have existed if ECW wasn't there because they broke the mold. They were using profanity. There, there were blood gushers in just about every event, even on TV. You had these wild personalities, the New Jacks, the Rob Van Dam, the Sabu, the Mikey Whipwrecks, the Balls Mahoney, the Dudley Boys. They were wild. Public Enemy, a group I feel like they don't get enough props, man. Induct them into the Hall of Fame. You've seen ECW, that was rough. You, Yeah, and it's even rough by today's standards. Looking back at that stuff from 30 years ago, it's like, wow, they really lit this fly. I'm talking about barbed wire matches. Sabu and Terry Funk, by the end of the match, Terry Funk... His, his uh, cartilage is like coming out of his. And they were getting paid pennies. They weren't getting paid Vince checks. No. Mustafa used to smoke pencil shavings. He sure did. And he admitted it. I thought that was one of those urban myths. But uh, Rob Van Dam, he has a podcast. And he had Mustafa on and he confirmed it. So there, there, that was actually true. I don't know. I, I hope I never get to that point where I'm fancying the idea of smoking pencil shavings ever. But I digress. Shout out to Mustafa for still being with us. I mean, being on the road with New Jack all those years, all that time, and you survived it. Surviving New Jack. When when is that documentary coming out? And I think that was actually what did it for him. I mean, not just being around New Jack all that time, but just being on the road. He just, you know, I I don't like being on the road like that. And I, I don't blame him. Especially when you're getting paid in peanuts. Paulie wasn't paying them people. And I want to call attention to Scotty Flamingo. That's what I was going to say. Scotty Flamingo, thank God the Raven character came about. Thank God the Raven. Because if, if Raven didn't exist, Scotty, what's, what's his real name? What, what's Raven's real name? No, not the bird Raven, not Edgar Allan Poe Raven. Where, where is Raven? Scott, uh, we're just going to say Scott. It's not popping up. There we go. Scott Levy. If it wasn't for Raven, Scott Levy would be selling Chevys. Use Chevys at that. Because the Scotty Flamingo, like, people ask, like, man, 
why didn't he break open? Like, why didn't he become anything with the Scott? Because his name was Scotty Flamingo. You're not supposed to win with it. Your gimmick is Scotty Flamingo. Oh, Scotty Flamingo. No. Raven, that thing, like that came about in ECW. Another, another nod to ECW because he, he did his little sojourn. He was uh, Johnny Polo in WWF. He was Johnny Flamingo. Or Scotty Flamingo in WCW, NWA. And then he became Raven in ECW. And that's when the tides turned for him. The Flamingo was not a good role at all. Like you couldn't place anyone in Scotty Flamingo and that was going to work. Like, oh, this is going to be our biggest star. Scotty, like, no, you're, you're mid card at best, at best. So thank God for the Raven character. And I always loved the flock. He did some gruesome, cool things, <laughs> gruesomely cool things in ECW, but like the WCW at first, that's how I found out about Raven. It's like, man, this dude's cool, man. And like his, his followers from the lost path, from the beaten path, the orphans, oh, mommy didn't like me. Daddy never hugged me. That, that was that crowd. That was the, the alternative grunge, you know, and, and it was fitting with the times. He had the whole like Kurt Cobain, I'm just going to sit in the corner and brood. Uh, but yeah, Melba, I, I told you we get sidetracked. Imagine if Matt was here. I don't even think we would have got to 92 yet. Fandango Flamingo. Exactly. And look what happened to Fandango. But uh, yeah, 1993, though, June 20th, the NBA finals are held and the Chicago Bulls become the first team since the legendary Boston Celtics of the 1960s to win three consecutive titles with a 99 to 98 victory in game six over the Phoenix Suns. The MVP, of course, was Michael Jordan. And I remember this. This is his third finals MVP. And I remember watching this finals because this is the one where they were down. I think they were in Phoenix and Horace Grant, he's getting trapped. He passes the ball back to John Paxson and John Paxson sinks it, sinks the three. It was a three pointer. And John Paxson, depending on where you stand, if you're a LeBron person, some people would say, oh man, John Paxson saved you, Jordan. John Paxson saved you. But I'm not going to do that because I'm an MJ stan. I, I love LeBron. I'm a Bron stan. And by the way, people, it's possible to be both. You, you can appreciate Michael Jordan. You can appreciate LeBron. They're both great. But I do remember that vividly. John Paxson hit that game winning three. And all was right with the world. When, when Jordan won the finals, it, it's still a team effort. You're absolutely right. And it's a team sport. We know Jordan, he was the face of the franchise. And a lot of people overlook in these championship teams, it's the role players. It's, it's the guys that back up. It's the supporting cast that back up the stars of course there was horace and mike and scotty but man you had john paxson you had cartwright you had bj armstrong craig hodges once again TikTok being very difficult you, you have to unlock this puzzle piece to continue your live like what it's very light skin of you no offense. No offense to any of my light skin homies. Shout, shout out to my light skin homies. I was just listening to some Drake the other day, actually. Mr. Anderson. He was here and then he's not here. Right when I said his name. Shout out to you, though, man. I actually know you. Solid brother from Memphis. I remember, man. I just wish TikTok would align with the other social media juggernauts. They just want to be on their perch all by themselves. Who do you think you are? You're so, 
think you, you just you're, you're better than everyone what, what, what what's with it hey on tiktok you, you think you're better than x tiktok you think you're better than instagram facebook it's been great talking to you too melva you have been the driving force of this podcast and I, and I really wish I could get you on here. Let's stay in touch. I t yeah, we definitely will talk later. I, I'm, I found a new friend doing this. Matt, Matt, when you get out of jail, you're going to be replaced by Melva. That's right. I'm telling you. That's why I fired you. I, f I fired him because if any of you saw the last episode, you're a trooper because my audio was off and he told me, oh, it sounds fine to me. It sounds fine to me. So I took his word for it. And then in post-production, I realized, man, my audio sounds horrible. His audio sounds clean. That He did that intentionally so that he could sound great without the, the audio popping. So I fired him. I didn't fire him. That's my buddy. But he is in jail, though. Yeah. He's in jail. Free Matt. Be nice. I, I am nice. That's, you know, I, I. By the way, I don't I don't wish that on any. I don't want. Bad things to happen. To <laughs> where? How did this get here? I don't know. Maybe it did sound good on his side. Yeah, he just has an untrained ear. He has an untrained ear. Oh, it sounds fine to me. Uh, free Matt until it's backwards. Bring him home. As JR would say, that man has a family. In 1995, Michael Jackson releases his story past present and future book one and you know if matt was here he'd bring up the whole allegations and all of that blah blah blah, blah. no I, I would tell him no i'm not here to talk about that i'm here to talk about his story past present and future book one that's where we're at that's what i would say to matt if he was here Oh no, man, because it's just too bad with the no. That's a whole nother time. That, that's a whole nother place. I feel bad. Yeah, but we're talking about his story. And I remember when this came out, it was a double disc. And if you don't own any Michael Jackson, if Michael Jackson was before your time and you're just like, hmm, I don't know what the big deal is. He wore a glittery glove. He can moonwalk. He can do a fancy dance. He bleached his skin, blah, blah, blah get this album it's a crash course and even even if you did get this album it just it wouldn't be enough you, you had to be there in the 80s and the 90s to fully understand mj mania it was a whole thing it was a whole thing you, you it, it, like in the 80s it was michael jackson and eddie murphy and then later michael michael jordan add them like you put them on anything and it was going to sell. I think they even put Eddie Murphy on the on the poster for one movie that he wasn't even he was only in it for like two seconds. It's like, oh, we got to have Eddie on here. Is he available? Can he take a picture? Can he take a picture for the movie? And then we'll just put it on the poster on the cover. But that was that was how Michael Jackson was. It was a whole thing. And his story, this is the one with you are not alone. I am here. here. I am Man, that one grew on me. Pause. And at the time when it was played a lot, Donnie Simpson, uh, was it BET Video Soul? That would always be like at the top of the of the charting of, to, of the top 10 that would be like either one or two and it got to a point where like yeah, i'm i'm over it but i do enjoy that song since times passed i'm i'm removed from just being bludgeoned with it to death it's a great song 
Um, it had his wife at the time, Lisa Marie. She was in there. And uh, RIP to both of them. I forget Michael Jackson did a collaboration with Notorious B.I.G. Yes, that happened. That's uh, R.I.P. to him, too, man. Like this whole album, his story, past, present, future, book one, man. Like even if you already knew of Michael Jackson, even if you were a fan, it's still the. It's it's a good collector's item. Because it's got all the hits. Billie Jean, The Way You Make Me Feel, Black or White, Rock With You, Stuff From Off The Wall, She's Out Of My Life, It's Got Bad, Just Can't Stop Love You, Man In The Mirror, Thriller, Beat It, Girl Is Mine with Paul McCartney, Remember The Time, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Want To Be Starting Something, Heal The World, Scream. I love that song. And that that was, I think, the first single. I think that was the first single from this album. Uh, the duet he did with his sister Janet, man. And that's produced by Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis. Yeah, man. They don't care about us. Dude. MJ, man. Like, he is the GOAT. He is the GOAT. And that's that's really what I try to do. We That's what we try to do on Happen in the 90s. We want to give greatness a celebration and specifically within the scope of that 10-year period from 1990 to 1999 why because it's the greatest decade in terms of pop culture yes there were some great things from the 60s yes there were some great things from the 70s thriller quite possibly the greatest album ever came out in the 80s the 2000s, 2010s, yeah, there was some stuff here. Yeah. But man, in terms of volume, the 90s is where it's at. But yeah, that collaboration with Biggie Smalls, that is fire. Get that. And did I say get that? Because you need you need to listen to that too. But yeah, also in 1995, Graham Puba, he releases the album 2000. And the only track that I remember is I Like It. It's, it's subtitled, I Like It, I Want to Be Where You Are. Graham Puba was a part of Brand Nubian. And when I first found out about Graham Puba, it was from the Sprite commercials. For, for those of you who know, y'all know. Yeah, Sprite, they wanted to implement the hip hop because hip hop was starting to get commercial. So they had Grand Pooba. I think he did a couple commercials for Sprite, if I'm not mistaken. And they would have other artists, but that was my introduction to Grand Pooba. Shout out to Brand Newbie and, and Grand Pooba. In 1997, Batman and Robin premiered in theaters and man this almost killed the franchise this almost killed the franchise and and i appreciate the players in it i i, I like george i think george clooney's cool dude chris o'donnell yeah i don't know too much about him he's all right i guess but i'm an arnold fanatic you got arnold in a in a batman movie and Alicia Silverstone, who was hot from that clueless run. Man, Batman enlists the help of his daredevil partner Robin and their new secret weapon Batgirl to stop the evil Mr. Freeze. Directed by Joel Schumacher, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, George Clooney, Chris O'Donnell, Uma Thurman, Alicia Silverstone, Michael Goh, Pat Hingle, and Elle McPherson. I left out Uma Thurman. I think Uma's pretty cool, too. Batman and Robin, it's stank stunk and i i am a fan of the franchise um but you lost me in the beginning because there's a little ice skating scene in the beginning and apparently batman's boots turn into makeshift ice skates i didn't know that i didn't know that did they always do that comic book fans if you're out there and if you care to respond or chime in 
were they always like like are they multi-purpose boots like it's just his whole get up like a swiss army life for any event any scenario unforeseen circumstance he's just prepared for when you need to glide on the ice and i don't recall him ever having to ice skate how, who taught him how to ice skate who taught robin how to both of y'all have ice skating boots that just pop out what what if you need to go really fast like do do you have the boots that like shoot out fire and like make you go like 90 miles per hour or can they do both can they do everything or did he just happen to wear those boots on the right day like man i'm going to see mr freeze i'm going to see about this 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 freeze guy so i, I might need to put on my uh ice skating batman boots the, the one that turn into the, the where the blades pop out the soles somebody informed me i told y'all i'm a wrestling nerd i wasn't a comic book nerd maybe if matt was here free matt free my bro that man has a family and if there was a drinking game for all of the Iceman, Mr. Freeze, innuendo, metaphor, phrases that he would use. Ah, uh, the Iceman coming. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. Like, what? You leave that punny wittiness to the Riddler. That's who does those. Like, that, you're... You, or or was that his thing was he full of those just just cold and freezing and icy metaphors and puns stay cool bird boy <laughs> it's weird because the the two people who are watching me on instagram and facebook they don't see the other angle that I'm shooting for TikTok, and we're over an hour in so it's like I'm, I'm talking here and then I'm talking into here and on the TikTok, I, I added one of those little fancy backgrounds that they offer and my head is covered by this spaceman I, I thought the little intergalactic background would be cool but I didn't know that my face would be covered by spaceman um but once again TikTok get with the program no one is bigger than the program TikTok. i need you to chill tick tock i need you to chill out uh. yeah and i i'm afraid to change the uh the settings now 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 that i'm live on TikTok and instagram and facebook oh here here are the effects let's see get the spaceman off my face what, what can we turn this into now i got a hat on i'm in the outback let's do that i'm wearing a hat at least they can see my face because when i'm talking into the mic addressing the stream yard people i'm getting covered by uh john glenn the spaceman but anyways, yeah, if there was a drinking game for all those Iceman in your windows, you'd be tanked. And also, like, there's a Coolio cameo in here, and I, I, I likes that. Shout out to Coolio. R.I.P. to him. So he was in there for two seconds. And then there was also a, a Jesse the Body, future governor of Minnesota. He makes a cameo. But something I also... I, this is one of the many things I didn't like about this. And I'm just going to rattle off some M-Dub facts that I got from IMDb. Uh, most of the scenes with Batgirl were cut because Alicia Silverstone had gained a few pounds during production and the wardrobe team had to refit her costume. When the press discovered the news, they slammed Silverstone's weight gain and mocked the actress for being too fat to fit into her costume. Director Joel Schumacher publicly defended Silverstone during interviews and press meetings, joking, what is this girl's big sin? She ate some pizza? When the taunting continued, Schumacher lashed out at the reporters that taunted her. 
He said in a magazine interview, it was horrible. I thought it was very cruel. She was a teenager who gained a few pounds, like all of us do at certain times. I would confront female journalists and I'd say, with so many young people suffering from anorexia and bulimia, why are you crucifying this girl? That's right, Joe Schumacher. Get on there, A double S. Because I don't know how profane I can be in TikTok. But he, yes, stand up for your actors and actresses. How dare you, 90s media, 90s press, journalists, people? How dare you? She was a little girl. She wasn't even, I don't even think she was 18 yet. Was she? Even if she was, she was still young. That's what sucks about being in the public spotlight, man. You're held to these standards, you know, and some of those people that were like harassing her and taunting her online, they probably had like two or three chins themselves. But I'm a journalist and this is what I'm supposed to no, know. You're not supposed to like make people hate their lives. Life is hard enough as it is. Imagine trying to like do what you do and be in the public. George Clooney has been known to refund people who saw this film. Does, does it count if you watched it on Max? I, I didn't pay a, for a ticket to watch this movie, but I watched it on Max. Do I get something, George, for my time and efforts? My PayPal is open. I zell. You can zell me, George. $50,000. And I'll, I'll, I'll change my whole opinion of this. 50, 50,000. Two extras were arrested and fired after attempting to sell uh, secretly shot footage of this film. And to that, I say, why stop there? They, they, they should have arrested everyone for this production, except Arnold. Leave Arnold alone. But I didn't care for this Mr. Freeze portrayal. Yeah. I like Drake with the melodies. I don't like Drake when he acts tough. It's just like that. I like Arnold when he's superhero. I don't like Arnold when he's supervillain. Ah, you need to chill out, Steve G. This is the first Batman movie to not be the highest grossing movie of the summer in which it was released. Another fun fact. Another fun fact. The highest grossing film of 1995. Or no, this was 1997. Why am I looking at 1995? Words are hard sometimes and numbers. Uh, the highest grossing film, obviously, in 1997 was Titanic. Uh, they they brought, blah, they broke bank. A couple of them. And the highest grossing film of that summer was uh, Lost World, Jurassic Park, which is the number two for that year. Number three, Men in Black. Number four, Tomorrow Never Dies. Five was Air Force One. Six, As Good As It Gets. Seven was Liar Liar. Shout out to Jim. We love we love some James Carey over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Liar Liar. And I, I remember watching that in the theaters. And that movie still holds up. Number eight was My Best Friend's Wedding, which also premiered on this day, uh, June 20th. Well, on June 20th uh, in 97. Uh, but I'm not going to discuss that because I don't care. The Fifth Element, that was number nine. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm on a lonely island, but uh, I didn't care for that movie. And um, I'm fine with that. Sci-fi is just not my bag. Nah. Um, and number 10 was The Full Monty, uh, which, from my understanding of it, it, it was these middle-aged men there's a group of middle-aged men who decided to like start stripping. They were out of shape. Middle-aged men who decided to start stripping and it was a big deal. It, it's number 10. Like Batman and Robin didn't make more money than the full Monty. The full Monty made $257,938,649, bro. How, like how, how much did they make? Batman and Robin made, wow, Batman and Robin made about half as much. They made $238 million. Wow. That is some weird and wild stuff indeed. But yeah, George, my Zell is open. 
During the shooting, George Clooney would visit his friends on the set of ER in full costume. <laughs> oh, that's so, that's great. I bet there were some haters in that ER cast too who were like, man, that should have been me. I'm in better shape than George. Yeah. Women like me too. Why he get to be Batman? There's always one. There's always one in every group. You just got to know your surroundings, people. In an interview, the cast members were asked what item from filming they would like to ha take home. Arnold Schwarzenegger said that he would be taking his Mr. Freeze armor home. Uma Thurman said she wanted Ivy's floral throne. Elle McPherson said she just wanted a cap or something that the movie's logo or with the movie's logo before anyone else. And George Clooney said he wanted L. McPherson. Get him, Georgie. Get him. Right after you give me that 50000 for watching this movie on Max. We could sell out of court. Uh, this was voted as the number one. It was voted as number one in Empire Magazine's 50 worst movies ever. I mean, it, it wasn't great, but ever, ever. Number one, 50 worst movies ever. Is it because of the big budget? Is it because you just think it's that bad? It's not that bad. Have you seen Frankenhooker? One of the, the worst movie ever. Number one. Have you seen Catwoman? Have you seen Fluke? We actually cover that in one of our episodes. It's in the archives. We cover that movie. It, it was a, a summer movie. They released this movie in the summer about a dog. That's yeah. But that, I mean, yeah, it's, it wasn't great, but it wasn't that bad. Number one worst movie ever. Yeah. yeah. And even though Clooney hates this movie, he does give it credit for bringing him into the Hollywood world it, it helped him cross over from from tv and and wearing the scrubs on er and, and being uh the, the boyfriend on facts of life yeah now i i can start getting top billing for now arnold arnold's got the top spot but one day one day yeah and like i said my best friend's wedding that premiered on the same day in 97 i yeah, we, I, I just don't care enough. Um, but uh, also in 97, the last time I committed suicide premieres in theaters. Uh, and it's about Neil Cassidy is a living. He's living the beat life during the 1940s, working at the tire yard and philandering around town. Although he has visions of a happy life with kids and a white picket fence. When his girlfriend, Joan, tries to kill herself, he gets scared and runs away. But when Joan reappears, Will he take the chance at that happiness or will he turn his back on it? Directed by Stephen T. K., starring Thomas Jane, Keanu Reeves, Adrian Brody, John Doe. That's Claire Forlani, Marge Helgenberger, Lucinda Jenny, and Gretchen Mole. Look, I just wish I could get my hour and a half back of my life. Um June 20th, 1997, film wise. It wasn't the greatest. Um, the last time I committed suicide, it, it, it's a period piece set in the 1940s, and, and it's about the whole uh, the the Beat crew, the Beat generation, the Jack Kerouacs and the Neil Cassidys, the poets smoking on the devil's lettuce. Yeah, it, it's got Keanu, it's got Adrian Brody. You know, it, it, love Neo, Mister Bill and Ted, all of that john wick but this was a no-go this was a no-go i who greenlit this who said this was it i because i you know what I, I can't even really say i watched it this was one of those deals where i pushed play and i started doing other stuff does that qualify i did did I, I turn in the homework assignment at the last minute. It's, it's when like, uh, I push play and I came back to the room and just in time to like, oh, uh, let's, let's move on to back to YouTube. But if you want to see for yourselves, the last time I committed suicide, it's available on multiple streams. 
they're practically giving that movie away. It's on all of them. The the Amazon Primes, the who it's it's on yeah. Just just pick one. It'll be there. The last time I committed suicide, it's even on Tubi. Yeah. That's how bad it is. But I, you know, me and Matt, when when he's here with me, we we pick an episode from two shows. And, and the shows that I wanted to cover. Uh, were Parenthood and Sex in the City. Uh, Parenthood in '99, they're airing the episode Poco Nono, and Zaria and her friend they want to go out uh, to the cabins. And unbeknownst to Zaria, they they get permission from Zaria's parents, and uh, Zaria's friend doesn't even tell her parents. She's telling her parents that she's going to be at Zaria's. And then when they get to the cabin, Zarya's friend invites some boys, and the boys they're trying to get fresh. But Zarya has a dad; she she has a father in her life, so she has boundaries. Yeah, and that's why I always tell people, "Hey, these babies need their mama and daddy." Zarya had a mother and a father who cared for her. She has some morals that she that she abided to. And shout out to Zarya, Miss Reagan Gomez. I love you still to this day. But then, as the as the boys are getting fresh with the girls in the cabins, in comes my guy, the the guy that they uh, the guy that they adopted. I was going to say JT, but JT is step by step. See, this is what happens when I don't have my co-host. Free Matt put some money on his books. He's not in jail, guys. I mean, I you know I'm joking. I hope none of my friends ever experienced that. I spent one night in there. One night. That's all I needed. Never again. No way. But uh, yeah. What, what's the... Uh, TK. That's his name. TK. I know it was two letters. Two consonants. It wasn't JT. It was TK. He comes into the cabin. He saves the day. And as the boys are getting fresh with them girls, he's like, nah, man, no means no. You got to go. And that was that. That that was Parenthood Poco No-No. And, and I think like one of the little side stories, Nicholas, he wanted to get some new shoes. And his mom got him the shoes, but they were off brand. She went to like Payless. Like, you know, it, it's like, you know, when, when you thought you got some Jordans, but the jump man is missing like a leg or something. It was one of them deals. It's like, dude. And then, it, you know, Nicholas is like, I, I'm not going to go to school wearing these. I will get roasted. But the shoes that he really wanted, they cost $40. $40. And if Matt was here, I would have used that sound by all throughout this. $40. $40. They cost $40. $40. But Nicholas, he wanted those shoes bad. So he did some extra chores around the house. He was spit shining those windows. He was mopping and glowing on those floors. I think he even put up some upholstery. He gets the money, just enough. He got the $40. $40. He got just enough to get those shoes. But then here comes the TJIF moment, the fatherly wisdom. And Robert asks him, like, what's more important to you? Do you, like, do you want to wear those shoes because you think like everyone else will think you're cool? Or do you want to get them because you think they're cool? Like, you got to start thinking about like, What's more important to you? He said that in less words, but that's that 90s fatherly advice that, you know, we all enjoy, that we all appreciate. That Danny Tanner at the last two minutes before that Miller Boy at production, before those credits hit, what, what, would, what would Tim do? What would Tim Taylor do? What would Philip Banks do? Carl Winslow? I was going to say Al Bundy, but you probably don't want to get advice from Al Bundy. He probably doesn't give the best advice. But shout out to Ed O'Neill, another Ohioan. 
one of my favorite fathers. But yes, Robert Townsend, he doesn't get enough credit. He's one of the great TV fathers too, especially from the 90s. And then in the Sex in the City in 99, they're airing season two's The Freak Show. Harry goes into freak mode while Samantha dates a man who likes to be slapped around. And because I don't know how safe it is to, to use profanity or any kind of blue color verbiage on TikTok, there's a guy on this episode of Sex in the City and his nickname, the girl, this is what the girls are calling him. They're calling him Mr. P.U. Cricket Letter, two Cricket Letter Y. And why do they call him that? Because he can do like these mysterious things with his tongue. Okay, they're not banning me. They haven't stopped my video yet on TikTok. But yeah, he he's magical with his mouth. That's what the girls are saying. Pause. I feel bad saying that. But the dude is a weirdo. You you actually see him. They they talk about this guy before we actually see him. And then you see Mr. P.U. Cricket letter Y. So they you see him, and this guy looks like the, the captain of the chess team. It's like this guy, this this is the dude knocking down honeys, ripping panties off with his with his teeth in Manhattan in the 90s. This guy. But yeah, that, that's what we would have talked about. So I'm giving you the condensed version of our show today. And uh if anyone's watching, I, I see uh one person. I don't know. Shout out to that one person and, and shout out to some of those people on TikTok before I got booted. I got unceremoniously booted. How dare you, TikTok? I curse you, TikTok. Doing this. I'm actually doing this, man. At first, I was like, man, I'm not going to do it. Matt's not here. But anywho, me and Matt would have talked about those two shows, Parenthood, Polka No No, Sex in the City, The Freak Show. $40? $40. And in 1999, Pirates of Silicon Valley debuts on TNT. It premieres on TNT. It's the history of Apple and Microsoft. And it's directed by Martin Burke, starring Anthony Michael Hall, Joey Slotnick, John DiMaggio, and Josh Hopkins. I tried to find this on YouTube. I tried to see if it was on any of the streams, Spotify, or not Spotify, but uh, any of the Hulus, uh, Max, or anything. Um, it's nowhere to be found. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it exists. It was a thing. It happened. I've seen clips of it on YouTube, but I, I can't find the full movie. So the one person watching this, um, if you're not a scammer and just trying to like, get me to buy unlimited internet let me know and for these newcomers on TikTok, if you know if you care to comment on anything uh the pirates of silicon valley because it, it looks interesting it's it's the history of apple and microsoft this is considered to be the most accurate depiction of steve jobs and bill gates involvement in the creation of the modern personal computer, even after the subsequent production of two additional Steve Jobs biopics um, or biopics, 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 tomato, tomato, Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hogan, the same deal. It's all Terry Balea. But I really do. I really do want to see this. It's a perfect day to watch this. Got nothing else going on. I'm literally just talking to myself. I have been for going on what over it's been an hour and a half. This is longer than that movie. The last time I committed suicide, I will say this. You're better off being here with me and listen to me just rant and ramble for the past hour and a half. You're better off than watching the last time I committed suicide. So there's that. And you're welcome. And I, I, you know what? I was going to say this is better than Batman and Robin. I don't have Arnold with me. At least Batman and Robin had Arnold. I don't. I don't have those kind of ties. You know, there's several degrees of separation between me and the Terminator. But one day, one day, and 
And uh, yeah, this is once again the bastardized version of happened in the 90s. Um, for that one person, can't see who you are. Thank you. I don't know if you watched this whole time, but you're a great human being. Your parents love you. They're proud of you. And I, I wish nothing but great things for your children. If you do have children, if you don't, I, I hope that your pets go to the best vets. Um, Where am I going with this? I thought the playoffs were today, the finals, but I think I'll just play it on 2K. But thank you, person. Thank you, person, for watching this. I don't know if you were here the whole time. And the, the people chiming in and out on TikTok, thank you, too. Uh, I, I just wish you guys would comment. I, I went through these extra links and measures on TikTok just so I can stream on all of them. But TikTok, oh, list of priorities. Free Matt, free Matt, because I he, I said he wasn't in jail. I think yeah, he's probably in jail. Yeah, he's in jail. He'll be back next Sunday though. Free Matt, there. That's number one, and then number two is TikTok. Do better. I'm gonna I'm gonna look in this camera and I'm gonna look in this other camera. Do better, TikTok. And see, it's doing it again. It's doing it again. You're, you're being extra. I can't even make a hand wave without it trying to like turn into another. You're just being extra. You do the most, but you do the least. You, you just make things ridiculously difficult. And I, and I don't like that. I really don't like that, TikTok. But yeah, this is Steve G. What happened in the 90s? Uh... Matt was the fat kid, Steve was the flat kid. Life wasn't always great, but you know what was? The 90s. Happened in the 90s. Yeah!